Our next topic is the stability and long time behavior of evolution systems. So we're going to start with difference equations and in a subsequent lecture we're going to talk about first order differential equations and then second order differential equations. So suppose I gave you a vector. You know, a vector is a function of n and it was a million times 0.6 to the n and 4 and 0 0.000001 times 3 to the n. And I ask you, how does that behave in the long run? Well, you might you know, write it as a sum of three terms. And you look at what each term does in the long run. This term, it starts off as a million. But every turn, it gets cut down to 60% of what it had been the previous term. This just 0.6 to the n goes to 0. So this whole term shrinks. Now. This term, 4e to the 2, uh, 4, 4 e 2 it just stays there. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't grow. And the last term grows. Now, it starts off real small, but it doesn't matter how small it started off. It's going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. In the long run, this term is going to be much bigger than the other two terms put together. The fact that the coefficient was small is irrelevant. The fact that the power, the, the, the number that you're multiplying, the, the number that you're taking to the nth power is bigger than 1, that matters. 3 to the n grows. 1 to the n doesn't do anything. 0.6 to the n shrinks. Now this kind of behavior is typical of what you get from a difference equation. So if you start off with the difference equation, where x today is a matrix times x yesterday, we know how to solve that. And our general solution is going to be you diagonalize A, you find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, and it's going to be a linear combination of the eigenvectors where the coefficients go as the eigenvalue to the nth power. So whenever the eigenvalue is smaller than 1, you take powers of a number less than 1, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It doesn't matter what the coefficient was, they shrink. And our term for things that shrink is we're going to call them stable. And any term that has an eigenvalue bigger than 1 is going to grow. You know, you take 3 to the n or negative 2 to the n or 5 to the n. These get bigger and bigger and bigger. And those are unstable. And if you have a term whose eigenvalue has size 1, then it sticks around. It doesn't grow. It doesn't shrink. And we call them neutral or borderline. So every term in this expansion we're going to call a mode. And we have stable modes that shrink, unstable modes that grow, and neutral modes that stick around. Now, of all the modes, there's going to be one of them that has the biggest eigenvalue. Whatever the biggest eigenvalue is, that term is going to go for, either grow faster than all of the others or shrink slower than all of the others. And so it will eventually be much bigger than all of the others put together. We call that the dominant eigenvalue. And the corresponding eigenvector we call the dominant eigenvector. So if you wait a long time, your, your uh, vector is going to look like the dominant eigenvector times a number that grows like the dominant eigenvalue to the nth power. Now, there, there may be a constant in front here, and there may be other terms, but the other terms are smaller than this term. So if you want to know what direction are you pointing in the long run, you're pointing in the direction of the dominant eigenvector. And how fast are you growing in the long run? In the long run, every turn you're multiplying by the dominant eigenvalue. So for example, let's suppose that we had a matrix, 7 by 7 matrix, and it had a whole bunch of eigenvalues. A couple of complex eigenvalues, some real eigenvalues. And let's classify which ones are neutral and which ones are stable and which ones are unstable. Well, negative 1, the magnitude of negative 1 is 1. So that's neutral. Now, the magnitude of 1 plus i is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, and that's square root of 2. So this is a complex number of size root 2, and that's bigger than 1. So that's unstable. 
and likewise the magnitude of 1 minus i is root 2. So that's also unstable. If you take a power of 1 plus i, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You take a power of 1 minus i, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. On the other hand, if you take a power of 1 half, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's stable. 2 is unstable. Negative 3 is unstable. Because even though it's negative, negative, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 3 to the fourth is 81. These numbers are getting big. They're sometimes positive, they're sometimes negative, but they're big. And finally, 0 is as stable as you could get. After one term, it disappears. 0 to the first power is 0. So our stable eigenvalues were 1 half and 0. Our unstable eigenvalues were 1 plus or minus i, 2, and negative 3. And our neutral eigenvalue was negative 1. So which is the dominant one? Which one grows the fastest? Well, the size of negative 3 is 3. The size of 2 is 2. The size of 1 plus or minus i is root 2. The biggest of these is negative 3. So the dominant eigenvalue is negative 3. So the dominant eigenvector is whatever the eigenvector with eigenvalue negative 3 is. And we call that, that was lambda 6, so this is going to be b6. So if you wait a long time, x of n is going to point in the b6 direction, or maybe minus the b6 direction, and it gets multiplied by negative 3 every turn. This term in the expansion goes exactly like minus 3 to the n times b6. And that's the biggest term, so in the long run, you can ignore everything else. So here's a picture of stability in the complex plane. Yeah, the unit circle. The unit circle is all the complex numbers of size 1. Those are the possible eigenvalues that are neutral. The eigenvalues inside the unit circle, those have size less than 1, and so they're stable. The ones outside the unit circle have size bigger than 1, they're unstable. Sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're imaginary, but they're all outside the unit circle is unstable, inside is stable. Finally, we can talk about whether a system is stable. Since in the long run, the system behaves like its dominant mode, we call the system stable if the dominant mode is stable, which is to say that all eigenvalues are stable. If you have 17 stable eigenvalues and one unstable eigenvalue, well, the dominant mode is going to be the unstable one. So if all the eigenvalues are small, when by small I mean less than 1 in size, the system is stable. If the biggest eigenvalue has size 1, it's neutral or borderline. If the biggest eigenvalue has size bigger than 1, it's unstable. And that's it.